All right, guys. So yeah, I got all that oil drained out of the Subaru, and I'm at the back of the shop outside. Let me switch this around. And this is our our used oil station. See, it says used oil. Um, this is where we put all our used fluids. If you're at home, what you can do is you can fill the, the dirty oil back in the, the containers that the new oil came in and then deliver it to a recycling plant or an automotive store. You know, they generally take it. Um, one thing to know is you never pour oil down the drain. You never throw it away. It's completely recyclable. So, you know, to be good stewards of the environment and the planet, you know, we recycle. So see this... This 50 gallon drum, it's got two spouts, but you gotta pour it directly in there and it's kinda challenging. Thankfully this has a drum funnel, so you can pour the whole pan right in the top and leave it there for a while and let it drain out. So I got my pan there, it's resting on those old filters. Um, and I got those old filters there too, so I can leave those, those there you know, for a few hours or overnight or whatever, and they drain completely because um, they they had some oil left in them. So anyway, that's what we do with our our oil. We tr we try not to spill it anywhere. Um, try to get as much of it out of the the oil oil pans as possible. Um, and I'm gonna work on getting some better oil pans for the shop so it's less of a mess. Those ones are so small; they're for those small engines. But that's all I have right now. Um, so yeah, now we're back at the car. I'm gonna, I got the, the plug back in, which you know, you just, same, same thing, you take it out, you put it back in the same way, use a wrench, um, just tighten it nice and snug, but don't over tighten it. Um, and on plugs, you want to make sure that you didn't lose a washer um, or a grommet. Um, this one, it, it, it didn't have one, but on a lot of plugs, you might have a, a rubber grommet. You want to make sure when you're taking that off, it doesn't land in the pan. Um, so when you're pouring out your used oil, you're also checking for any parts you missed that may have came off when you took off the, the plug. And you can always check the, the owner's manual or a parts diagram to make sure there's no, no extra parts that you're missing. So yeah, we're going to take our fill cap off. I know this car takes about 4.2 quarts of oil and I have a 5 quart container so obviously I'm not going to pour 5 quarts in and like the Bobcat video I'm not even going to pour all 4.2 quarts. I want to pour you know maybe 3.5 quarts or so and see where I'm at because I don't want to overfill it. Um, unfortunately this 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 container doesn't have any markings but a lot of containers will have a transparent marker here so you can do some basic measuring. Oh here we are, it's on the other side. So yeah we got markings on here to let us know how much we have left, how much we filled. See this side is liters, this side is quarts. So we go one, two, three, four. Four point two is probably around here. So we're gonna go. Let's see. We got one, two, three. We'll fill. We'll fill to about there, and then we'll check, see our levels, make sure everything's looking good, and then we'll go ahead and top it off and check the dipstick to make sure we're on the right accurate area. So let's see if I can find us, you guys. Right about there. Um, and when you're filling oil, you know, it's always a good idea to use a funnel. Um, you know, even if you're really good at filling, it's just, it's just cleaner to use a funnel. So I'm going to grab my funnel and my oil. So I put my funnel in the oil fill. Another thing is, you know, I always have a rag, you know, I might have it over my shoulder, unless I'm working around moving parts, I don't want that to get pulled into anything, but I always have a rag on me, um, you know, a good practice when you're filling things up is to put that rag around the, the base of where you're filling, 
So if you spill over, it's, it's going to hit the rag and not your engine that you're going to have to clean later. And uh, it's, it's not a huge deal if you spill oil in the engine bay, but you know, on belts, it, it's not great. It can cause noise. Um, if you spill it on the block, it'll heat up and smoke and stink and you'll be kind of confused. Oh, is my car working okay or is it just, you know, that oil that I spilled on it? So yeah, try to be as clean as possible. When you're pouring, you're looking in the, in the, in the container, seeing where the oil's at. And then you're just starting real easy. And you get as close as you can to the filter. And then it's just a nice steady pour. You know, you take time, take your time. And you're looking down the funnel and making sure you're not building up a ton of oil in the funnel because that, you know, it can kind of build up and then it's, it's overflowing and you got a mess. When you're starting out too, you know, pour a little in, go check your plug. Make sure, you know, you don't have any leaks or, or you didn't forget the plug and it's just draining out the bottom of the car. That thing's, that, that has happened before. Um, or maybe you pulled the plug on the transmission pan and you're filling the, you know, you're, you, you emptied all the transmission, you thought it was oil and you're filling the wrong thing and these things happen. I remember, you know, I was changing the oil on a big truck once and I pulled the transmission pan instead of the oil pan. And I was like, gosh, this, this oil looks really red. But it needed a transmission flush anyway, so. All right. All right, so I poured a bunch in. Um, looks like I got one, two, three, and a little bit. I'm just going to pour a little more. Now I'm going to let that settle. I'm going to let that all run down the engine and then I'm going to check my dipstick and see where I'm at. So I'm going to set my oil aside somewhere safe, put the cap on so it doesn't spill. I got a clean rag. Look for my dipstick. So I got my dipstick, pulled my dipstick, I'm going to clean my dipstick off. And we didn't talk about this last period, but some dipsticks will have, you know, markings or lines. Um, this dipstick has two dots, uh, two hollow points, you can kind of see them there, two holes. So that bottom one is the low mark, that top one is the high mark. So we want to get our oil really close to that top mark. Um, we don't want it over the, the top mark. Overfilling a car, you know, is, is not good. Underfilling is really bad. Uh, you want to have enough oil in there so it, the engine's adequately lubricated. Um, but you never want too much because the car is designed for a specific amount. They wouldn't say 4.2 if it was supposed to just be 4. Uh, nor would they say 5 if it was just supposed to be 4.2. So they want 4.2, so we're going to get as close as we can to that top mark. And then a good practice is to run your car, drive it, and then check it again and make sure you're still accurate. So I'm going to put that dipstick back. When you're, put, when you're putting a dipstick in, it goes in a, a specific way. You know, some of them are easier than others. Like this one's kind of challenging to get aligned. So I'll fiddle with that and uh, get back to you on the, the next video.